Andy Johnson, Minnesota State University, looking at understanding reading from a cognitive perspective, sometimes called the information processing model or the standard memory model. This model is key in the field of cognitive psychology to understanding how we process the world in general, and in this case, how we look at reading. Perception, sense registry, sense memory, the first part of it. First of all, stimuli. We are bombarded with stimuli. This is the sense data that we encounter. It could be sight, sound, smells, feels, or taste. Perception is detecting the stimuli through our five senses. Senses. We are bombarded with billions of stimuli every day. We cannot attend to all of it or we would go crazy. So we have to make choices. And that's what attention is. It's the choices we make about which perceived stimuli are attended to. And sense memory, sometimes called sense register. This is where the original sense data are registered. This has an unlimited capacity to, to perceive data. However, a very short duration to store this one to three seconds at the most. And you can see the information processing model there. The second part is short-term memory. A little bit different than working memory. Short-term memory essentially is a holding pen for data, sense data and other data. It has a limit capacity, plus or minus two. That means we can hold about seven bits of information. Some people can hold five, some people can hold nine, that's the plus or minus, for about 15 seconds. So a smaller duration, smaller capacity. Working memory, a little bit different. The in, this is like a workbench. The information is held in short-term memory as you do something with that data. So it's a subset of short-term memory, technically. All right? Now, chunking is something that we do. We put small bits of information into larger, more meaningful holes. Why is that? I will show you. Here are eight letters. Go ahead and try to memorize them. Well, don't actually. It becomes a little easier. 1976, 2014, and it becomes even more easy. That's an example of chunking, putting things into meaningful holes. As far as reading, we could hold seven letters or seven ideas. I'd rather hold seven ideas. Learning to read. Now, efficient readers, they don't hold all these letters in their short-term memory. They use minimal letter cues. Remember this top down. We use the context, we perceive a letter, and we fill in the blanks. Automaticity is performing a procedure operation without thinking about it. We want our reading sub-skills to be automatic, to recognize words. That's why we teach the process to develop the skill, different cognitive processes related to comprehension and word identification. Not so they learn our process, but so they can do it automatically teach the process to develop the skill. And long-term memory, almost an unlimited capacity and duration. Everything we experience is here. It's not a problem of encoding or putting in. It's a problem of retrieving. And of course, if we visit that space in long-term memory often enough, that that pathway becomes very deep and wide and we can retrieve things easily. And there is a two-way flow of information. Information flows from sense memory to short-term memory to long-term memory and back again, up and down. Some teaching tips. Use paper to extend the capacity of short-term memory. This is called taking notes. So you are learning new things as you're reading expository text. You're writing it down and you can see everything in front of you on the page. When learning to read, ask children to learn about familiar things. Remember this top-down flow of information. If they're reading using words and experiences with which they are familiar, they're able to fill in the blanks. Reading becomes easier, develops these neural networks and neural pathways, and align literacy experiences with students' natural desires and inclinations. They have natural desires for email, tweets, all these other things. This is 2014, not 1985. New forms of literacy are arising. Basic ideas from a cognitive perspective.